basket case builds. They show up, they're in a bucket, they're in a, they're in a laundry basket. Pieces, parts, taken apart all over the place. You don't even have all the stuff you need. That's what I'm going to be doing today with this classic American flyer. Turns out to be a 293. Back from the good old days in the 50s. Let's get into it. Let's take a look at this little gem. And I scraped the pieces out of the bottom of the box. And I just kind of out the, out, 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 out. figured out what it was from researching this right here. They only made one of these to be the 293. No shell. Luckily enough, I found one on the eBay that's broken, and I'm the only one dumb enough to pay $5 for it and get it shipped into me. We gotta clean up all this stuff. Today's Friday before Christmas, and uh, according to the tracking, it is here in town, but they're not gonna deliver it, you know, until Tuesday. But that's okay. I can work on this this whole time. We got this rust on it, and I and it's filthy. This is absolutely filthy. I'm gonna put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. And we're going to see what that's going to do for us. These parts I don't believe are painted. Hopefully this little feller. Well, let's just look. Horseshoe mode. Check this. From one. Here. Yes. From there. There. I'm just checking continuity from each one. Over and over. This is a three pole. Look at that. So that's good. How about our coil? We want the, ju we want the juices flowing through that too. According to this, it says it's good. Sure. E unit. Wow. The electromagnetic reversing unit. E units are only on line else. It's got that coil in there. Oh, you sure they bend everything over? Yeah. Lockout unit right there. Oh, that frame is bad. Wow. Oh. Pickups. I'm a guessing. Huh. Warm up the soldering iron because we're going to have to desolder a couple wires off of this, I see. And I want the E unit out of there. And this weight, I guess it's screwed on from that screw right there. Take these little guys, stand them up. Get underneath and bend, bend, yeah. One more, come on, you got it, you can do it. Needle nose pliers, straighten them up. Now you, you don't get to do this a lot of times. Metal fatigue. Get this big bat bugger out. Shocked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. This will help me not lose the screw. And there's a screw for the unit hiding out underneath this truck right up in there. Oh, I'm going to have to get the real screwdriver out. This will work a little better. Got more torque. Yup. Yeah. This little guy's warm already. Here it comes. Yes. More. Yeah, there we are. So this, I'm going to ultra. It almost is a candidate for the old vinegar soak because of this rust, but it's also dirty. Look at these wheels right here. That's the wrong screwdriver. Look, it, it, it's got all oh, the buildup. This is painted. And that ultrasonic cleaner is going to take that paint right off of there. And then we'd have to repaint it, which they're probably going to have to do anyway. So ultrasonic cleaner. Put it in a Ziploc baggie, some cheap dollar store degreaser. Maybe thin it out a little bit with some water. So it doesn't contaminate all the water that's in there. Ultrasonic cleaner is sitting at about 120 degrees currently. Well, that's gonna get her, get her warmed, warmed up. I hope there's no hole in this bag. Poor place to find out. Just a touch of water. Well, the ultrasonic must have did something good because look at the filth in there. Oh, goodness. Let's rinse it off, see if we need to do it again. I'm going to say she needs a little more time. A lot of the rust came off, especially up in here. Some of it's pitted in really bad, though. The trucks, though, they're not, nah, they're not happy. They're not happy at all. More time. I want to get this part in the ultrasonic, too. Looks like we can pop a couple bolts out back here because we want this arm, this electromagnet armature off. Yeah, ooh. And then I want the smoke unit off. Oh, big, big screwdriver. Oops, holy moly. Touch the keyboard accidentally. Listening to some Boston. Yup. Okay. Ew. Ew. This is really bad. I'm pretty sure that ultrasonic's gonna whoop it up. So here's the before. Yeah. Here's what our gear sets look like coming straight out of the ultrasonic cleaner. I mean, it really brought it back around. Side rods are, they're rusty. This, after 15 minutes in there, 
Still got a significant amount of rust, so we are going to put this in some vinegar. Mm -hmm. I save it, that's why it looks kind of nasty. So I could use it over and over again. Now, unfortunately, this process takes overnight, so I'm glad I'm getting a jump start on this. These side rods, valve gear, they're not coming out very good, so we'll give them a little taste in there. This little piece right here, it's got some rust, yeah. I think we'll throw him in too, just for measure, good measures. And now I sit, shoot. What should I do? Here is our tender body, absolutely filthy, but we're not putting it in the ultrasonic cleaner, no. We will have to do this one by hand. Toothbrush and some Dawn dish soap, see if we can get her shining again. You sit there looking at this thing going, why God, why, why, that's, that ain't, you know, it was, it was scraped off the bottom of a recycling bin is what I was told. The thing showed up, I didn't know what it was. All I had was that tender to go off of. So I start Googling around and I managed to Google into some American Flyer catalogs. I found this website called AmericanFlyerExpress.com and I went back and I started looking at every year's catalogs, trying to figure out what the locomotive number was. I couldn't look it up by the tender, although I can now because I'm, you know, one more smarter. But now that's how I figured out that it was a 293 because it has a very distinctive tender. They only put that on just a, a, two different ones. The 293 and 295 had that tender. This one happens to be a 1953 to 1957 with the reversing unit in the tender. But when I got to my old American Flyer book right here and I was able to flip to the pages... And it tells me that if this thing was in good condition, it'd be worth 67 bucks. And if it was in excellent condition, excellent, it'd be worth 132. Of course, I never believed these. So I went ahead and hopped into the sold items that are out there on the eBay. And sure enough, these things, they go for a little bit more than a common Atlantic. It's like, oh, this thing's worth putting a little bit of time and money into now, of course, it ain't. I know that it ain't in excellent condition because, well, what I'm going to do to it eventually, you're going to find out. It's not stock. It's never going to be stock. I want to make this thing pretty. It's a mid-grade Pacific. It's got some nice features to it. That's why we want to spend the work. And also the challenge of making this hideous-looking thing run again. Yeah. Well, let's keep going see how she comes out. This armature is missing a thrust washer on it. Uh, I got a copper washer here but it's too small it's an eighth inch i need five sixteenths i'm going to try to drill this out but it's hard to hold that little bugger so i'm just curious if i put a piece of tape down this is just an experiment get my drill out here and see if i can drill this i don't know what's going on what's going on spinning okay so that didn't work this might not work at all huh baby yeah Holy moly, right on. Just need to file that down a little bit, smooth it up. Yeah, just made one. Love it, loving it. Touch up the hole here just a little bit. Let's get our chassis oiled up here. It was in the ultrasonic cleaner, then we soaked it in the vinegar for a little bit. Uh, these are aluminum, and you don't want to soak those in vinegar because the vinegar actually deteriorates the aluminum. But I had to get the rust off of this part back in here, clean the wheels and the axle. So these two parts being aluminum, uh, the paint got really thin on it. We'll tape it off, and give them a little, little bit of painting. These came out nice, so then I used the Dremel with the wire wheel to clean them up a little bit. I think maybe I'll just spray them with some clear so that they won't rust just from humidity in the air. Get down inside here. We're gonna go in between the wheel and the chassis. You can see the axle sticking out. I'm gonna give it a taste, and we're going to leave it at this angle. So maybe some of that can work down. And then we'll do the same over here. One, two. Yeah, clean it up. Give these side rods just a little tasty tasty right now. I think it's just rod. Oh yeah. That's a sick disquieter right, right down, right now. This puffer gear up here, give it just a little taste. Well, we're almost at of Earl here. It's only been two years, two and a half. So I was doing some of this before I started making videos. Wheels came out nice and white. Yes. We'll put our brand new thrust washer at the front of this. So I'm going to give this just a little taste right here. And then just some taste right here. I'm going to put our armature in. I want to get a little super lube. 
Something just a little heavier for it. Something that'll stick to your ribs. And this will go in there and you actually gotta screw it in. I cleaned up the smoke unit with just with a wire brush. I didn't open it up. And then this part here I put in a bag and I submerged it in the, in the ultrasonic cleaner. And it came out absolutely shiny, 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 shiny. And free of grease and oil for the last 90 years. But of course, now it's dry. Super dry. If it moves, if you can tell that it's moving, give it, just give it a little taste taste. Here's our lockout lever, and it's it's really quite stiff. This would be locked out, keeps the reversing solenoid from moving, and this would be what it's supposed to do. And in here, you can see the this drum down inside there, we're trying to cast our peepers on. A lot of wires in the way. You can see how it's turning in there, changing our continuities. Put our rotor electromagnet in. These wires were going towards the back. So we know that we get that on, right? A brush holder. Plus I just want to put a little bit of, little bit of grease being back over here. Plus this did have a wick for putting a little oil in to keep this back armature oiled up. Another thrust washer here. That's also going on the back of the motor, right up there. Just some. Yeah, that looks, that looks good. Because we can't turn our motor. Not at all. Only it can do that. The smoke and puffer unit, this pin goes through the center here. And then you gotta stab that rod. Then when it's inside of this, you know, the rod won't be able to fall out. I like to give this just a little, I don't know. Does the guy supposed to do this? Maybe, maybe not. It moves. It's a sliding part. Now you gotta fight this screw back in over here. Just some. So that's all assembled. Now we need to put in our brushes. And I was fortunate enough to find the other brush. It was stuck in the brush holder. All buggered up. See how they're... This, this one needs to be longer. Usually this happens if they get heated up or something like that. Ah, gentle. We cleaned up the armature with the old fiberglass pencil. These springs look like they go onto the end right here. Stick it in. Use something to compress it. Slide the keeper down. It's trying to catch it there, see? It's got that spring that's trying to be bad. This spring's not holding the brush like I hoped for. That's okay. We'll still make it work. And you know, realistically now, if I hook some juices up to this, it should run. It should. Got her up on my shift stand here. See if I can get some drip drips in there. I don't know how much I'm supposed to put in. How about 18 drips? Got a Lionel transformer. It's hooked up over here. Our power is coming out completely from the tender. So we got our clips in right there. Our E unit is standing up right over here. Found at the bottom of a garbage can. Sure. And now we know why. The reverse mode. Neutral. Forward mode. Oh yeah, good lord. That's what I'm talking about. Man, that thing really smokes. Holy jeez. Shocking. Took almost nothing to get this working. I'm gonna spend more time painting the body. This tender, after I washed it, it's still got a lot of scub. It's not pretty at all. Like the rivets are holding scub in. And this side here, I, I've already done a little something something to it. And you see, oh wait, there we go. Get it in the right light. That's, that's a lot better. And it still looks really good. Now this is gonna be weird. It just, it just popped into my head. Now when I was in uncle's outfit, they sure taught me how to shine things that were black. Mm-hmm, yeah. Wax pol wax brush and a buffing brush. Now this hasn't been used, well, probably since I left uncle's outfit. <laughs> so there's not a lot of wax in it. It's kind of what I'm trying to get at. You know, you'd use this kind of wax right here but there's just, there's just residual in there. This printing is on there and it doesn't seem to affect it. I'm just putting, so I'm just able to get just a little bit of wax that's still left in the brush on here. And then you just go to working it over like you did a brush back in the day. Of course, I don't want it shiny, 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 but you know, I would like it to look like new. And just that little bit of time, now you can see that all that, ick is gone. See, there's the ick. So 
So I'll finish buffing this thing up and we'll see if we can get the whole thing to be shiny. I'm no pro, but uh, that, looks a, that looks a lot better. Yes, it definitely does. It's got a little, sh little sheen to her now. Oh yeah. So that's all knocked into shape. Here's something that we had a little problem with. It came through the ultrasonic cleaner just fine. Then I soaked it in the vinegar for three hours. And when I came out, the black, the blacking that was on it came off. <laughs> Dang it. Rust is gone. The rust is definitely gone. But now we got this bare metal and it's going to have to be painted. Trucks are going to have to get, you know, wire wheel to get all this debris off of them, get them prepped and paint them. We'll just go with a flat black on it. Clean up our pickups. Oh, they're cold riveted. Dang it. Got this little Jesus clip right here. Out. One pickup. Cute little spring right there. Well, we're gonna have to drill those out. It's the only way to get rivets out. 532s do it. Oh, this little pickup here came off. Almost ruined it. I anticipated that. That is a brass, yes, very soft brass rivet. Come underneath here, pry it up. Yeah, we didn't get into the meat at all. Insulative washer right there, sure. Here's our brass rivet right there. And then this is a bushing to insulate from the frame. And it is hard as rock. There it is. So we're gonna drill the other one out. We're gonna wire wheel this frame, prep it, get it ready for sanding. This goes out, this is the draw bar for the locomotive. And you can see that it's all buggered up. Straighten this out with needle nose pliers. Tighten up this rivet here some, just by giving it a little couple goo goo. These trucks, see how I come off there? No, yes, it's like an HO. The conductive wheels on this side, conductive wheels on this side. Well, after prepping everything up with this old thing right here, I need to buy a new wheel, it looks like. They don't last very long. Got all the pickup wheels taped off. Yup, 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 yup. So yeah, vinegar, bad, but nothing that a paint job can't whoop into shape. Plus, it's gonna make everything look better anyway. Right? Yep. Brand new. When Dave sent me down this box of stuff for this locomotive here, it had everything, just about everything in it, but the shell and some, some little hardware bolts. So I immediately get on the eBay and wouldn't you know it, there was one shell for sale, up for auction, of course, a 293, five bucks, opening bid, because it's missing the pilot up here and it's beat to death. And that doesn't bother me. I've always kind of wanted to see if I can freehand a pilot. And since it's missing its pilot, it's not original. Nobody's going to really want it as a collector. So I'm going to strip the paint off with my ultrasonic cleaner. And we are going to paint it in my happy colors of black shell, silver smoke box, silver fire box. I don't know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll Tuscany red the roof or something like that and see what kind of pilot I can come up with it. We're going to spend the next whatever it's going to take. 45 minutes, an hour, half an hour, 20 minutes, getting this paint stripped off. Start off with a nice bare cast aluminum, aluminum, aluminum frame. Hey, I wanna take just a quick second and give a shout out out there. Dave Hoover, now he's the one that sent this in to me. I mentioned him in the last video also because we've been chatting back and forth on the phone, talking about this and that. He's got some stuff that I wanted. I've got some stuff he wanted. So we've been doing some swapping. All works out. He's the one that sent me this locomotive with a bunch of American Flyer track and some older cars from the 50s, a lot of locomotive parts. Dave's out there in the Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm close. He's got a couple of YouTube channels out there. He's got two of them because the first one he's already filled up with videos. He's like a rail fanner, does a lot of railroad weather stuff. He likes to put up little snippets and things that he thinks about. And, throws them up there. I, I don't know you could fill up a YouTube channel with videos, but he's he's almost got two of them filled up. So if you want to, if you guys are into rail fanning, pop over to his channels. Great guy. Let's get back into this locomotive. We are going back to is reassembling this tender. I built, put one of the trucks back on just to make sure that my idea was correct with the technique. 
Hey, remember we drilled that rivet off? It's sitting right here. And I wanna drill it, tap it, put this little bolt in right over here. And when it's all said and done, it's gonna look like this. So you need you one of these. And the old 1 16th of an inch drill bit. And you need this. A nice, strong, I need those pliers. We're using 256 by quarter inch machined. I'm using my vise as something to back it up. I need a place for when the drill bit goes through that, you know, it won't land on that, but it's got something to hold it. And you see, we got that little hole right there. Now the first part of this drills really easy. And then when you get to this end, for some reason, it turns into depleted uranium and becomes, oops, uh oh, comes really, really hard. Low and slow is the game. Okay, and you gotta go all the way through it. You get an opportunity, you go down to the Harbor Freight, this beautiful vice, $24.99. And it spins this way and it rotates around the other way, but down and oh geez, it does so much stuff. It does everything but the laundry. Oh, it's a nice vice. Heavy, too. 15 pounds, 10, I don't know, but it's worth it. Now I'm gonna use the old vice grip and we're gonna hold it like this. Then I got my 256 tap here. We're gonna gently work our way into this. In, in, and until it starts to bind up some and then back it off. You know, you definitely don't wanna break the tap off. So you go in, take a little, little snip out, come back, pull it out, twist it in, twist it out. And this took me probably 15 minutes on that other one. It looks like, I mean, it looks like brass to me or copper, brass, copper. It is tough. And if you break your tap off, you're, you're done. Then after a while of very careful tapping, pop out the other side there. Oh, yep, yep. Unscrew this tap out of there. And now we've got a tapped rivet. I also used a little bit of the old light oil to lubricate that tap when it was going through there. This insulating washer here, start like that, centers up in the hole, get the rivet all the way in there. See that it's centered. This guy sits in there, our truck. Now that rivet is conducting the juices and I got spray paint on the inside of this hole. So I just gently wanna make sure that I get the spray paint off. I'm not making the hole any bigger. Rat tail file, just getting the paint off. And then down here at the bottom, I wanna get just a little bit of the paint off, so I'm just gonna use a use this there. See how you can see that it's cleaned off right there? This metal contact that rides on the axles. I cleaned this part up with the fiberglass pencil. Also cleaned up where it rides on the axles. When this is all prepped up, it will look like this. 256 screw and a little tiny copper washer. Some of that. Make sure we put our copper wheels on opposite sides. Get it centered up in there. Get our screw, screw getting going. Spin this, make sure everything's doing what it's supposed to do. This copper strip will like to turn on you while you're putting the torques. But you gotta get that back on the head of that rivet. That's why we drilled it just enough, just to take the part that, the part that swedged over out. The shoulder of the rivet is still there. See the rivets turn with the body. And if we've done everything right, we'll have continuity. Horseshoe. So we're gonna go here with the rivet. Here, axles, wheels. Not over here, because you know, that's not a pickup. And we also don't wanna have it on the frame. That one's good. Here, axles, both of them, wheels. Not the other wheel. So we are not shorting out. Reuse the original rivets in there. Yep, yep, yep. Save the screw in the E unit so I'd, you know, prevent me from losing it. Well, the screw hole ends up underneath that axle, but we'll, we'll get her in there. Got her in. I found it was easier to put the screw in, hold it upside down, bring the unit up underneath of it, hold the screw with the screwdriver and get it started. Bend these little fellers over back where they were. Got our extra tender weight here. Get our weight and our screw put in. Oh, that's just about a bigger pain as the other one. Get the old big boy screwdriver out to make sure this is gonna stay where we want it to. Get these wires put back in place. 
This one's kind of hiding out underneath of it. Got our tender all tuned up, painted. Where is that beautiful body? Only got two of these screws. I knew I forgot something. The hardware store and two. That'll hold them. That'll hold us together for now. Here is where we are at. Oh my. Should put some tape around all those. I always hated all them wires. Here's what our body looked like. Some time in the ultrasonic cleaner with some cheap degreaser took the paint completely off. But then it had kind of a weird marbled look to it. So then I soaked it in vinegar and then I rubbed it with a toothbrush. And then I spent a bunch of time with this and I picked out all the details and got her kind of polished. You know, yeah, this is going to work. Boy, I didn't even know that these things were that detailed. Heck, they got valve gear sitting up in here, which is super odd. Well, I guess not. Lots of things. I think I lost that. The bell fell out, found it on the floor. I don't know what this, this is probably the steam whistle. I'm not even sure if it had it in there. I'll have to look at the video. Here's our broken cow catcher up here. And I've bought me just a huge selection of brass and some polystyrene. And I can solder the brass to itself, but I don't think I can solder the brass to the cast aluminum. But this here is going to help us put it to the cast aluminum. On to building a cow kit. This is what I've come up with for a pilot. I modeled it after this one right here, which is uh, the pilot on the Tyco Pacifics. Is this the locomotive Pacific? It looked like a good idea to me. I tried to make it all out of brass. Turned to find out I can't solder brass that small. Not that it can't be done. I just can't do it. So here's our ugly toothless sitting over here. And I could attach this little guy. It's just kind of a mock-up. Yeah. Sure, it need, needs a coupler up there. We'll JB weld it on and then file this groove, you know, with JB weld closed to kind of graft that all in. And hopefully I never run it into anything because it'll break that right off like nobody's business. Yeah. Well, as is par for the course, I had to take everything apart because this little screw back here, which holds our rear truck, gives it some somewhere to live. It's broke off and I thought I was gonna have to drill it and easy out or perhaps retap this hole but this side was sticking out just the tiniest of bit right there and I can't believe it that I was able to grab a hold of it with these nice needle nose pliers and pull that out it wasn't rusted up in there or nothing so it's like this is a good day I spent the last four days painting the locomotive shell. Uh, and you spend most of the time waiting for the paint to dry, you know. So there's that little, that's just the tiniest little thing. And I bought some, a bunch of tiny little fellers at the, is it gonna be this one right here? Hey, 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 right on. So what should we do to keep that truck on? It's gonna go like this. This is gonna come in from the bottom. Maybe I'll put this little nut on. We don't have the right stuff. So we have to fake it until you make it. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna use that to, to kind of Loctite it. Lock. And we gotta Loctite the, the bolt in, the machine screw, and I'm hoping to do it with this nut. I think it's gonna work. Now I can reassemble it all again, really fast. Ooh, new bulbs, six volters. And yeah, the transformer goes up to 18 volts, but I don't run them wide open. So maybe this way, when I'm running them at 50%, the bulb won't be so dang bright. Or it'll be brighter. That's what I wanted to say. The bulb will be brighter at the lower speeds. Yes. So let's get this thing back together. Slide this because it's got the keepers that are sitting right up in here. And you slide it in. Yeah. Line that up. Our bulb. Yep. He's going to screw in right there. I think this right here is the screw for the headlight. So we got to get it in. Maybe I can in, down, push, push. Uh-huh. Get it started. Oh. Oh. That didn't hold it as well as I'd hoped for. Get this front pilot on. Screw this tender in place, finally. At least we still got the bolt for that one. Lucky, lucky. I did put these pickups back in off camera. I really don't know what they're doing because the wheels do a fantastic job of picking up and they're, you know, and then they got this extra. I know the later ones don't have these on there. Let's show a nice little close up of these side rods. Like this, yes. Some on the bottom, some on the top. Yeah, it really only wants to fit one way. Quarter inch on it, nut driver. Oh yeah, 
do the same on the other side. This thing's ready to go. It's ready to go to the races. Yeah. I've kind of been hiding the body from you so we can have this grand reveal on it. I think it's time. I've been painting on it, been working on this thing for two weeks, on and off. Let's do a little photo shoot, don't worry. I'll do it normal this time. Let's take a look at it, run her down the track. Looks like my headlight idea didn't work. I think I've already burned her out, but I just fired it up and she's already doing the puffing. Oh my goodness. Another successful repair done on her. What a gorgeous locomotive. Wish I had a longer test track. Yep. Wow. Wow, one of my more enjoyable revivals right here. This poor thing never had a chance. Good thing Dave Hoover found it, stored it for, I don't know, 15, 20 years somewhere, and then decided to ship it to me. So, 33 percenters, glad to see you guys made it all the way through. I had a blast with you on this episode. Thanks so much. Here's a couple more videos to check out if you'd like to keep on watching some Ron and classic model trains. Bye bye.